Hello. Today we're going to step back in time to the 18th century and perform some of the earliest known dumbbell exercises from that time period. Exercises that would have been done by the likes of Benjamin Franklin and President Thomas Jefferson. We have for you today an assortment of both civilian and military exercises, and I believe this is the first time in modern times that anyone has attempted to recreate them. So you saw it here first. We've already done an extensive video on this channel covering the history of dumbbells in depth. But to summarize, the use of such hand weights goes back to ancient Greece and Rome when they were called halteres. That practice went extinct. But more than a millennium and a half later, the use of the dumbbells was revived in the 1700s when they were called leads by Europeans and Americans looking to cultivate their health. What we are going to demonstrate today represents some of the earliest known exercises from that time using what is essentially the direct ancestor of the modern dumbbell. I have here a very old pair of dumbbells, probably from the 18th or early 19th century. At that time, they would typically be made of iron and covered in hand-stitched leather or cloth. This pair also has twill padding between the iron and the leather, most likely to avoid injury while being swung at high speed. This other pair is likely from a bit later, from the late 19th century. There is no padding at all on this dumbbell, only leather covering iron. As both of these pairs are very fragile and extremely rare, I am going to use this other wooden pair for the actual exercises. These have a similar bun shape and could be from the late 19th or early 20th century. As far as I'm aware, there is no detailed treatise on dumbbell use from the 18th century, nor any actual system. What we do have instead is a handful of various sources from the period which each contain scraps of information, basically individual techniques and exercises which I have researched and compiled over the years. These I will perform today for what I believe is probably the first time in at least two centuries. We're going to perform five exercises in total, two civilian exercises and three military exercises. Civilian exercises. Exercise number one, Irish exercise. This first exercise was written down in 1799. However, it was said to have originated many years prior from an Irish clergyman. We might thus speculate this to be from anywhere between 1760 and the early 1790s. Posture. Quote, when used, the person is to stand upright with his toes a little turned out. Exercise. Quote, raise the leads nearly close to each other, opposite to the pit of the stomach, bending the knees at the same time. Then thrust the arms down smartly, as far as they will go without stooping, and straighten the knees at the same instant. Thus continue these opposite motions alternately and quickly until the arms feel to be slightly weary. Secondly, when it is begun, it should be more gentle, but gradually increased in quickness and force. It is often used to 300 or 400 strokes at each time and repeat it three or four times per day. Many persons can go on to 400 or 500 at one turn. Others cannot. Exercise number two. 1797. This next one is a swinging exercise. Dumbbell swinging was mentioned by American founding father Benjamin Franklin, who wrote in 1772, quote, The dumbbell is another exercise of the latter compendious kind. By the use of it, I have in 40 swings quickened my pulse from 60 to 100 beats in a minute by a second watch. A description of such a swinging exercise can be found in the 1797 Encyclopedia Britannica, which reads as follows, quote, The method of employing them is to take one in each hand and swing them backwards and forwards over his head, describing a figure somewhat like a parabola. This not only strengthens the arms and opens the chest, but promotes the circulation of the fluids. A parabola is a very specific mathematical pointed U-shape, it is unclear if this description should be taken literally or if the writer was simply being pompous. If one merely swings the arms as described, this creates a semicircular trajectory rather than a parabola.
alternate version. If we interpret the parabolic shape literally, a pointed U can be closely achieved by adding in a half squat and forward trunk bend, which are not mentioned in the original description. This is admittedly speculative. By way of coincidence, after having already shot this video, I received a German exercise book from the early 1900s which shows almost this last identical exercise, swinging the dumbbells by their ends. This may be a coincidence, or it may indicate that these types of exercises endured in some form into the early 20th century. Military Dumbbell Exercises In his influential 1795 Rules and Regulations of the Cavalry, the British Major General John Gaspard Le Marchant briefly mentions that there is a dumbbell exercise for his troops, but he does not actually describe it. Three years later, however, the exercise appeared in another 1798 military treatise. This exercise contains several parts. Posture Quote, The shoulders must be carefully pressed back, the hands hang by the side, but never to appear in front of the thigh, rather behind. The knee that supports the body to be well forced back, which will keep the body steady and preserve the height. The text next instructs to take one dumbbell in each hand. Exercise number one, raise bells. Quote, the dumbbells being placed one on each side of him, and himself in an erect, steady posture, on the word, raise bells, he will take one in each hand, and by a gentle motion, raise them as high as his arm will suffer him above his head, then gradually sinking them with stretched arm as much behind him as possible. He will form the circle with them as described in figure 4, plate 2, making the circle complete by causing the backs of his hands to meet behind his body. This will be repeated according to his strength five or six times. Exercise number two, extend bells. Quote, the bells being raised to the shoulder, they will be forced forwards, keeping the same height, then brought back in the same manner. This will throw the chest forward and force back the neck and shoulders. This must be frequently repeated. Exercise number three, swing bells. Quote, the top part of the bells to be made to meet together in front, the height of the breast, then forced backwards with an extended arm to be made to touch behind. In doing this, the palm of the hands must be uppermost and the elbows well down. Time that the circle is performed, two seconds. This circle must be repeated 14 or 15 times. Ground bells. Quote, 
the recruit will let fall the bells by his sides and remain steady and firm. End quote. So believe it or not, uh, from everything I just shot, that was actually a pretty decent cardiovascular exercise. So I think uh, what Ben Franklin was saying was definitely true. If you were going to swing these dumbbells uh, quite a lot at a given time, you would get a pretty good uh, workout. Now, personally, I don't find these uh, quite as sophisticated as the stuff that was going to come later in the early 1800s. Uh, it wasn't systematic like that stuff was, but uh, you do see how a lot of the similar types of movements will end up being used later during that time. For instance, in the posture video we did recently where we, uh, we were making the arms go behind the back like that in a circular motion, uh, one of the exercises, the military exercises I did today is actually very similar to that, the idea of it. So you can see how these notions and ideas of physical culture did continue on and were built upon and became more and more sophisticated as time went by. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Have a nice day. If you'd like to know more about these exercises in even greater depth and how they are done, please consider supporting us on Patreon, a link to which can be found in the video description below. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.